بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو اندر لیکچر وچ لیکچر آل رائٹ لیکچر نمبر سکس ہاؤ آر یو اسٹوڈنٹس آر یو آل رائٹ آل از ویل گڈ یو ورکنگ فائن ٹوڈے وی ہیو آئی مین کمپلیٹیڈ فائیو لیکچر اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کمپلیٹ دا سکس ون اینڈ یو نو آفٹر سکس لیکچر سکس یس واٹ از دیٹ It can be an assignment for you. All right? Okay, students. So, well, uh, in the last lecture, what did we talk about? You remember? We talked about principles of which method? Direct method. Fine. Very good. How, how many of you have revised that lecture? Listen to that lecture. You all have attended? Very good, good. Keep it up, students. This is the spirit that I need throughout this course, right? Because you all want to be good teachers, and this course, again, I will tell you, is very important course. Fine. So you ready for it? Okay. Do you have your textbook with you? Which book? You don't know still. You know it. Which book? Techniques and what? I have a book with me. All right. That of course by Larson book that we are following the book so far. So book keep the book in front of you students once you attend this lecture. So book uh, is important because that time we have to refer to book in fact. Clear? So pay attention, listen to and also whenever I direct you should you need to see the what? Need to see your uh, that particular area. So let's start this students. What is it? Lecture number six. What is the title? Can you see? Today we'll talk about what are the differences between direct and grammar translation method. Today we might have a short lecture today. No? Okay, because we we'll talk about differences and maybe you will find some repetitions because while discussing those methods we, we did talk about uh, uh, their differences and here I thought a lot of people have uh, reservation they asked questions that we need to have these two man methods and we need to know differences so that's why we have a lecture on this particular uh, topic which is very important that what are the differences between direct method we call it uh, DM and trauma translation method but before that as usual what is it review of lecture number five the previous lecture so we talked about principles right remember that no you forgot no you all know it yes what is it the goals of teacher using direct what is the goal of teacher using direct method yes to help the learner communicate to help the le learner read a passage to help the learner read and comprehend very good right so again the role of a teacher what was the role of teacher using direct method yes the teacher was yes the teacher in fact in that method he directed the students teacher motivated activities in fact he helped students do activities so initially he, the teacher comes forward he makes student busy and then he withdraws. Remember that? Yes, so of course, the role of a teacher is very active. Point. But the class is? The class is student centered. Teacher, in fact, yes, makes students because teacher helps the activity go on, in fact. Then again, the teaching learning process, of course, we talk about another uh, principle that what is, what, are the, what, is the, what are the characteristics of teaching learning process? Yes, so we talk about that in this course, in this principle, where, yes, the focus on what? Communication, in fact, right? And focus on communication, on speaking skills, on listening skills, on reading skills, on writing skills. And also on the sub-skills of language. For example, sub-skill of speaking is pronunciation, fine? And again, the grammar is important part. And how grammar was taught? Yes, through 
inductive method of course this is another uh, the principle that we talked about that what teacher does the teacher yes he gives different sample sentences to the students there may be five sentences maybe 20 sentences maybe a handout on that and what students do they infer a rule from that right so teacher infer a rule from the students infer rules and this is what we call it my dear students inductive way of mean teaching grammar grammar is one of the important elements of the, the language so this is the way that in this method inductive method is used to what teach grammar then again how vocabulary is taught how vocabulary is improved yeah by using words so vocabulary in use words in use in fact so focus was on use in that that was another principle and there was more interaction remember that yes so more interaction was there of course and there was a better model of real life communication so dear students this is what the principles which we talked about the brief about the principles and the of uh, what which method direct method we saw that there is more interaction and again which kind of interaction real life interaction which life real life interaction example you are on your di dining table clear and then the teacher can exploit this activity he can provide students in fact what a dialogue between what a mother and a son right between a, a sister and a, and a brother so again that I mean that these are the real life situations right a dialogue between yes between professor and a student fine or a dialogue between yeah husband and the wife fine of course agreements disagreements whatever so again a real life situations are there so you can see that there is more interaction and again vocabulary of course is taught through the use the words in fact how the use the students learn how to use a word students don't only the cram the words in fact that they have the list of words I might have told you earlier that I mean I there was a student in fact and he what he did that he learned all the words of dictionary believe me he crammed the dictionary but their students were unable to communicate so the students only knowing words that maybe you know that dictionary is very important well we, we agree but but if you if you if you have learned all the words and and you are unable to express yourself either oral I mean uh, through orally through oral communication or through written communication so if, if you are a poor oral communicator and also written communicator so what is the use of knowing what is the use of cramming that that dictionary clear but if a student knows some words and he knows how to use them so that is the real purpose is that clear so dear students these were some of the, the principles of grammar translation method that that we saw and I, I hope you know these principles and again I would say that well for every principle there is a for every, for every activity there is a thought there is a thought uh, there is a principle behind and of course you might have read in your textbook that these what how did we I mean infer these principles how did we know this principle we saw the class in fact so we saw the class from activities and we we what we we got uh, we infer those principles right so therefore these are the eight principles of direct method now come to the today's lecture and what is today's lecture what are the differences between direct method and drama translation method what are the differences in fact okay if I ask you find some commonalities the common features can you find some common features I mean the similarities between GTM and direct method yes it can be a question to you what are the common things in fact between grammar translation method and direct method the, 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 yeah can you answer try try you might find some some common features between the, these two methods in fact For example maybe yes uh, sentence formation but here again how sentences are grammar is taught yes in both but again 
the, the methodology is different. You can say that grammar is an important element, so both, met though both method methods consider grammar as an important element, but the way, yes, teaching methodology is different in both methods. Is that clear? So, when you think over, you might find some commonalities, but today our lecture, in fact, focuses on what are the differences between uh, these two methods. Alright, so, the first difference, what does GTM do in fact? Uh, encourages use of mother tongue. Direct method discourages it. A very, I mean, very common difference, you all know it in fact. That even the name, if you see the name direct method and the grammar translation method, dear students. Right? What is it? Direct method and grammar translation method. So one, direct method does what? Yes, direct method directly links the meaning with the target language. Whereas, grammar translation method, yes, encourages mother tongue. Right? So, GTM, of course, the method which in fact makes use of the mother tongue or the native language for learning a foreign language. Whereas, the other method discourages. So, no. Why? Why DM discourages mother tongue or L1? Because I have told you many a times that no two languages have, have commonalities. Right? So there are chances of what? Negative, trans negative transfer. There are very few chances of positive transfer when one language, in fact, your, of course, L1 helps you in learning L2. But most of the cases, if you see the languages around, you will find out that language, uh, of course, two languages have different patterns, in fact, because there is historical background. Is that clear? So that's why this grammar translation method encourages and again why it encourages because again the G GTM was used what to be able to read literature of classical languages and direct method of course was developed to help learners communicate in the real life situation so that's why things are common then that's why the both methods of course have different, different uh, the, the, the both methods have different approaches for what? For the, yes, mother tongue, in fact. Second, in fact, difference, my dear student, is that this grammar translation method, yes, considers translation as an essential L2 learning strategy, whereas DM is a barrier in learning L2. First point, I told you that GTM encourages mother tongue. DM, direct method, discourages mother tongue. Again, why? I give you reasons. Second is that, well, GTM says that L2, GTM is of the view, the method says that L1 helps us in learning L2. Fine, L1, language 1. L2 means the target language. L1, the mother tongue. This is what? Yes, GTM. Grammar translation method is of the view. This method states that this language, in fact, if you want to learn the target language, so L1 does help. Whereas, direct method negates it. Direct method says, no, L1 interferes. L1 becomes a barrier in learning L2. Right? Because, again, if you see that, again, example of Urdu, for example, like, you and I have learned this Urdu, but mind you, that how did we learn Urdu? Through natural way we learned Urdu, in fact. We, we started speaking this language, of course. We listened to this language, of course, and we, we started, I mean, we read, and then we write the language, and we, we learned, of course. So this is why, of course, this the direct method is what, I mean, rejects this use of uh, mother tongue, right? Whereas, GTM, accepts it and uh, direct method of course considers in fact L1 as a barrier. What does the word barrier mean? That hinders in learning L2. So that is of course second difference with the my dear students. Now another, what is it? As far as this grammar translation method is concerned my dear students, 
it aims to what in fact GTM aims to teach what literature of target language and improve knowledge of mother tongue yes we mentioned that that of course the purpose of that method was to be able to read literature of course of classics right which two languages Latin and Greek yeah so classical la Latin and classical Greek so for, for I mean if you want to know literature or if you if you want to study li literature through language so yes grammar translation method works it, it's a positive fine if, uh, I mean it's a positive feature of the grammar translation method you can have a debate that fine if you know literature of Urdu for example literature of English so then GTM is okay right it works for yes if you want to improve your literary knowledge whereas the purpose of language is not to do that the purpose of language is to interact in different situations so the DM yes aims to teach communication in target language now you can decide that either right the language is the purpose of language is to communicate in the target language right or that the purpose is just to what to teach the literature of target language fine so definitely of course mean that you see only a few people who specialize in literature for them it's okay for them G GTM is a good matter but the point is since we, we learn language and of course and we teach language for different situations in fact if you do a, a research if you do a survey and you will find out that how many people literally specialize in literature in fact and then majority learns language to be able to communicate in that language and our case example we are TEFL students so why we learn this language and why we teach this language so that our students would be would represent us globally in fact our student would be able to communicate to the world our student would be able to yes do their jobs well in their workplaces our student would not be embarrassed when they talk to a na native speaker of English so our student would be able to communicate well in this language our student would be able to make their presentations in the business world right because it is international language and wherever you go you have to and if you know this language you can yeah you can you can you can you can talk to any anybody in, in the world of course right either telephonic conversation or it is voice chat or it is Skype whatever and again that well I told you that the world is open for you fine that if you are a good TEFL teacher then you can by being in Pakistan you can teach people in Saudi Arabia you can teach people in South Korea clear you understand so there is huge scope for you people there is a huge scope but for that you have to be yes very you have to be very active you have to be very professional right and you need to take keen interest in this subject only then you will be able to achieve your goals right so this is very practical course and the course would definitely help you in fact you are really really adding value to yourself students fine this course is important all subjects I would say in this the course that you have you are pursuing the masters in English yes important but this course particularly and phonetics also right these are the course are more applied they come under applied linguistics example when you communicate yes phonetics helps you in fact clear and whenever you are hired by the company an organization right any firm any NGO any government firm so this yes of course this this TEFL would definitely help you if you know these methods right if you know how to use them right so if you then you see you have opportunities there of course but that's why for this you have to really uh, practice using these methods and I always of course mean ask my students to see visit in fact right visit the classes and see what are the drawbacks of trans, trans, uh, GTM and what are the merits of tariff method so dear students in fact what we are doing today we are talking about talking of what differences between DM and 
GTM in fact. So I told you that what was the aim of GTM and then of direct method. Then GTM in fact makes use of only literary passages like we saw that river run see so Mississippi of course that was a literary passage so in grammar translation method teacher can takes a passage from any animal form by George Orwell a teacher can in fact take a passage from uh, Francis Bacon's essay a teacher can take passage from Charles Lamb's essay so again a teacher can I mean for example a poetry can be exploited but literary passages taken why because the purpose is to be able to read literature of that language and that to, through grammar translation method yeah you can do it very well so here again the passage that the the teacher chooses most of the time literary passage which method GTM whereas in DM yeah, choice is the teachers choice is yours fine you can take passage of course historical passage geography culture community so you are open now over there in GTM you are closed that you have to take passage from the literature whereas here open you're open fine students yes you understand so good right this should be the spirit so dear students I was talking about that you are open now this is easier fine you're more comfortable you can take passage from different sources you can take passage you might have taken your IELTS exam so in IELTS what happens that generally the reading passage is taken from any source the examiner can take a passage from any of the sources Huh? What is IELTS? Okay, IELTS. I love you, students. Good question. IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System. Uh, should I repeat for you? Okay, take it down if you want to. IELTS is a test, is a, of course, test system, for test for English language. So IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System, dear students. Fine? So, and this what happens okay again a very good question yeah your four skills are examined my dear students I mean if you are I mean a good reader all right good you can get good good marks in that again what happens right the examiner gives you three or four passages and he asks you to read and attempt the questions at the end this is what reading in writing what happens okay good question in writing you may be given uh, a topic to write an essay on that or examiner may give you a situation and would ask you to write a letter fine and of course we have listening part also in IELTS in listening what happens students good in listening well my dear students different in fact maybe uh, a clipping from a movie it can be a dialogue a documentary is played and the students are supposed to listen and attempt the question at the end fine so four skills are examined maybe in speaking of course they ask you for an interview so this this is what IELTS my dear students fine so I was talking about differences and the last difference is that GM di sorry direct method takes passages from yes from different sources a passage can be taken from history from geography from chemistry in fact from physical chemistry so that is what in which method direct method and the difference yes so my dear students what does in GTM what happens right so GTM considers what literary language superior to the ordinary language because the purpose of that method is to to promote in fact to be able to read literature of that language of course so that the method was designed for this purpose so that's why the GTM says that literary language is superior but again for example talk about now if, if I ask you that how many of you can speak Shakespearean English no right so I mean the point is that, that the language that is in is not Shakespearean and of course language is changing of course language is a changing phenomenon you all know it and it's a good thing right if language stops changing yeah language is a dead language so language should change right 
example talking about uh, what Sanskrit these languages are no more in why because these language could not change that's why if a language changes so it's a good feature of language and this gives life to a language you understand all right so that's GTM considers our values what literary language or gives value to literary language over day-to-day -day language whereas what the DM does DM in fact emphasizes the importance of language of ordinary communication yeah this is the purpose of course so here there is another difference that the DM talks about real-life commun communication uh, I mean real, uh, see what situations based on realism in fact and then in fact if you move on my dear students that GTM focuses on what yes on the building of reading and writing skills yes this is again important we, we saw in the class proceeding that well students write essays find a lot of activities were there for for writing only in fact clear where students write in fact students are made to write I would say and again there is a passage taken of course so students what they read the passage fine and again how do they read no, of course right students read and write so that GTM stresses on which method yes students writing and reading whereas direct method yes focuses on what oracy skills what are oracy skills speaking and listening okay my question is that what are the or uh, RSA skills and what are the sub skills of these RSA skills can you answer sub skills of speaking and what are the sub skills of listening are there any sub skills of listening as well yes students okay now come to speaking what are the sub skills of speaking for example pronunciation yes fine if I ask you a question how can we improve our pronunciation how pronunciation can be improved or being a TAFL te teacher how can we improve pronunciation of our students of course you are future teachers you should think of what to do okay can listening help all right how it helps students when the student listen and they imitate yes good fine yeah again my dear students yes it is a direct way of improving your listening if you know phonetics fine right and of course you you you, you know these uh, what are the phonemes and you know there are 44 sounds in English there are consonants there are all and uh, and if you know how to transcribe a word then it's fine that's fine but the point is that listening really really helps you improving your pronunciation when you listen to now what to listen by the way what should you listen yeah you need to listen to native speakers good listen to teachers fine listen to other documentaries in fact auctions or auction by the way graduates of Oxford University right Cambridge students so the, when you listen to these people listen to newscasters as well yes good observation fine these newscasters they try uh, really uh, hard to pronounce words correctly and they put efforts in fact that's why I mean you, you can say that most of the time that newscaster pronunciation is fine it's correct so I mean if you again that which I mean newscaster definitely if you want to uh, improve your uh, British pronunciation RP so BBC is the best in fact American would be CNN news channels are there even Fox channel is there so yes students I recommend to, to you that please read uh, so listen to these channels as well because listening my dear students improves you a lot right of course I mean when you are the TEFL instructors so first of all you need to be model right so you need, you need to have correct pronunciations and how would you do it yes your subjects that definitely helps you if you have done your phonetics well if you are focused on this phonemes right so then you will be pronouncing words correctly but again on the other side if you cannot for some reasons or you find that subject hard so direct way is what to do listen to right 
this one to newscasters, this one to, I mean, um, native speakers. So this way would definitely help you, my dear students. Yes, agree. What is agree? Agree, good. Agree on principle. All right. So listening is important skill. We need to improve our listening. And of course, once you improve our listening, definitely sub skills are improved, right? I mean, with sub skills, of course. I mean, see, speaking. All right. Okay. Fine. You're right. Your observation is valid. So pronunciation is sub skill of speaking skill. Very good, of course. But definitely the listening and speaking. It is said, good listeners are good speakers. What do you think? Do you agree? Good listeners are good speakers. Yeah, fine, fine. Because when you listen, and even we have got two ears to listen and one tongue to articulate. Fine. What are these? Articulators. Tongue is an articulator. Then you have soft palate, hard palate, lips also. Articulators. Articulate. Articulate. So, my dear students, pronunciation is a sub skill of a speaking skill, in fact. So, when you speak, definitely you improve your pronunciation. So, this method, in fact, what direct method, yes, consider speaking and listening as primary language skills. Why these skills are given this value, this status? Because, definitely, of course, most of the time, if you see that, I mean, you, you speak. Um, how much you speak in a day, and how much you listen in a day, and how much you write in a day, and how much you read in, I mean, they in course. If you compare the use of four skills, you will come to, to, to know, you will reach a conclusion, my dear students, that yes, you speak more, right? Even you listen more, and then you read more, of course, as compared to writing. We only write when you have to write, for example. When there is an urgency, you write. For example, now, uh, I mean, you will take your midterm and you have to write. You will do your assignment, you have to write. Or sometimes type as well. So yes, you only when you have to. Otherwise, you don't care. Right? But, you, I mean, you cannot, I mean, live in the society unless you speak. If you remain quiet, for example, so even some process, even silence is communication. When you are silent, you communicate. Yes? So dear students, are we are talking about that, well, this, this direct method considers what? Listening and speaking as a primary skills. Because these two skills, we, we, we use these skills, these two skills more than the other two skills, for example. Right? I mean, you go out and you read, right? You have you read billboards, you read, in fact, flyers. What else you read? You read these uh, holdings, for example. What else you read? You read, of course, the different signboards. Very good. Reading is there. Or in the class, you have a peripheral reading as well. Maybe you have a charts and you have all these things. So you keep on reading. And when you buy something, you read what? Yeah, you read the price as well. Fine, that's good. So what does you read? You read expiry date. What does you read? Manufacturing date. So all these things you have to read and you read. Fine? So, but you write only when they and you have to write so if you in fact compare these four skills the use of these four skills you will reach a conclusion my dear student that well you, you you speak more than than other but but listening and speaking i would say they they go side by side when you speak then definitely somebody is listening to you when when your other but yes when other person speaks then you have to listen so this is what right that you speak and your listener listens and when he speaks, you have to listen, right? Whereas reading and writing, people say that good readers are good writers, right? So I said, good listeners are good speakers. Is that clear, students? Clear? Do you understand? So there are, of course, some differences are there. That DM considers what listening and what speaking as a primary skill. Another difference, what is it? Evaluation. What is evaluation, by the way? how we evaluate students or how we check our students how we examine our students from that examination right examine examination you take your midterm exam you take your annual exam so just what, what do we do we examine the students in fact so for that my dear students we set some objectives that at the end of this 
semester find these I mean objectives I mean are to be met fine so are to be achieved and for that you set some goals clear for example you set a goal that at the end of this semester my student would be able to present well and and you evaluate initially when you start a course so you set it at a goal that well at the end of this language course the students will be able to speak would be able to write would be able to read so but and once you complete that course you evaluate why do you evaluate that where do your students stand for example you start uh, teaching this uh, English language in, a, in an institute right so an employer hires you and asks you to teach English language to the students so definitely being a good language instructor so you need to set some goals these are the goals Right, that I want to achieve after three months time after four months time and for that you have to you have to know the students level as well I mean you cannot say that of course if a student is I mean is unable to read a passage in English and you say that well after six months he'll be able to read write listen and speak confidently so again this so the goal should be realistic whatever you could achieve so for that that's why need and need analysis is important for that placement test is also important that where does the student stand and whatever efforts you put whatever uh, strategies you would use drills you would use in the class activities you would use and finally you you uh, I mean achieve whatever you the want to so therefore evaluation in GTM is what is written of course just writing is there so that is in the way uh, this uh, uh, evaluation is done in grammar translation method whereas in IDM sorry DM evaluation is both written and oral see both of course mean we saw the methods of oral uh, oral examination and we saw the methods of written examination in the last lecture we saw right that in oral method what happens in DM yes interviews are there conversations are there right mime is there commentary is there fine and of course I mean uh, public speaking is there students are given a, a, a topic and they speak on that yes no yeah so this is what students they are different ways where we evaluate the students and we evaluate both the skills we evaluate their writing skills and we evaluate their the oral skills of course and we saw also what are the written methods sentence formation is there in fact right so comprehension questions are there so these are the ways we evaluate students students written work fine right clear any doubt any confusion no fine so how evaluation is done in G in grammar translation method how it is done just written fine only mean because the purpose is to can you go back that improve writing skills fine so here even evaluation is written there's no focus on what other skills Another, in fact difference is that this grammar translation method emphasizes on explicit deductive rule based grammar teaching terms are new for you okay explicit clear right I mean the rules are explicit means that you know something which is visible right opposite is implicit example ex, right implied meaning you know implicit something which is here hidden but explicit something which is apparent something the rule which is given because I told you that in deductive method your students rules are given explicitly rules are given and the students are made to use those rules which method students drama translation method so grammar teaching is done through deductive method fine one and how it is how it is done students are given rules clear what happens in GM sorry DM yes in DM students what aims at implicit inductive grammar teaching method through practice of a particular sentences this is very important sentence very important point you need to know my dear students that well in grammar translation method the grammar is taught right how right through 
through deductive approach and what is it explicit deductive rule based grammar is taught whereas in direct method it is implicit and is what what else rule mean inductive method is used which is more implicit so again grammar is an important element of the language we cannot deny that but the method of teaching is different in GTM yes we saw deductive method and in DM right it is inductive method in inductive method what happens yes first samples are given different sentences sample are whatever pattern the student the teacher wants student to know so the teacher what what he does that he gives different samples of those uh, sentences right students are you with me yes clear you see good so dear students we are talking about what differences between grammar translation method and direct method very good students so where's your book it is there where's your notebook are you taking notes yes good keep on taking notes it's really important this the book would definitely help you as well right but the notes taking is important be right so interact be attentive fine whenever there is a confusion you can stop me and ask me question I'm here to help you out fine students all right so dear this is what that through practice of particular sentence again another difference GTM encourages grammar rule memorization memorization is highlighted memorization is focused cramming of course rote learning is there and you know what are the if I ask you a question what are the disadvantages of rote learning can you can you think of some disadvantages yes you forget yes this can be because people who learn things through this way chances are there that they can forget things in fact so when you commit things to memory you cannot retain it for long you cannot retain it for long because why because you know you I mean you never know the exact meaning of that right so maybe you can retain that for for a week for uh, not even for a week for a day or for a do some people you know what they do that they cram some uh, the questions for exam and maybe they reproduce that question in, in that paper but mind you the next day they may not know what was there and believe me even these the, the people who cram things they learn by heart so even when they attempt the paper right when they when they attempt that particular question they in fact I mean a good teacher can easily know that the student is confused why because he has crammed that he cannot link things right he cannot develop that coherence among sentences why because he has crammed right and of course except for the Holy, Holy Quran where you, you can learn it by heart all the 30 sparas 30 chapters you cannot cram other things very very hard and mind you of course at this age because you are doing masters and of course maybe there was a time that you could do it well but now it's, it's difficult of course right you're all adult students you are pursuing your master's degree cramming right it's difficult at this moment of time and even we do not encourage being careful teachers careful students we do not encourage memorization why because yes I mean there, there are more disadvantages of memorization vis-a-vis advantages right so you cannot rely on a memorized speech never ever rely so many a time the student memorizes the speech when he comes in front of the audience what happens he forgets right teacher ne kaha ki jab takreer karne jana to kya kehna samjhna sab gobi ke phool hain and the student goes there and he makes a speech and he comes back कहता मैडम नहीं वो गोभी के फूल नहीं हैं क्या है वो उनकी तो आंखें भी हैं और वो तो घूरते भी हैं इज आर क्लियर ये स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज वट हैपन क्रैमिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल राइट सो डी स्टूडेंट्स डू नॉट क्रैम थिंग्स ऑफ कोर्स जस्ट ट्राई टू मेक थिंग्स क्लियर ट्राई टू लर्न थिंग्स मीनिंगफुली एंड अगेन दिस इज 
the purpose of, of course, this direct method that we, we, we learn and the teacher tries to teach. Teacher tries to make the concept of the students clear. So this is, of course, one is that GTM encourages grammar rule memorization, but DM may never teach grammar rules again. Exactly, fine. Rules are not directly taught in DM. Fine. Implicitly, through use, students, in fact, know these rules. Clear, students? Fine. Any confusion? Fine? Okay. All right. Move on, students, now. Here, what this GTM does, it builds vocabulary. And how it builds vocabulary? Through vocabulary list. See? The teacher gives a list of words. And the students, what do they do? Learn those words, in fact. Maybe they are... Every day the teacher gives them 100 words or 50 words and the teacher and the students go back home and they learn. They try to know the words in fact. And he, but when it comes to use, blank. Right? So, in that method, GTM, well, see, the words are given. Vocabulary items are given. And the students, yes, cram those words. Well, students, so, we're talking about that in grammar translation method, what happens? Yes, we built vocabulary through vocabulary list, in fact. And you can try it, and you will find that maybe you know a lot of words, but, you know, at times, you see, when, when, when it, uh, it comes to use, or you try to use that word, you look for the word, in fact. You say, okay, yeah, I, 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 I had that word in my mind, but it just slipped my, my memory, in fact. And you keep on thinking, keep on looking for a word, in fact. Why? Because maybe you have learned that word. You had that word, but again, you slips. Fine? That word slips your memory. But if you learn a word and in, 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 in direct method, what vocabulary items, in fact, see how this method encourages using words in meaningful sentences. So once you, you learn how to use a word, then chances are rare that you will forget that word. It is said that if you want to return a word, if you want to keep a word with you, use that word or lose that word. If you don't use a word, yes, chances are there, right, that you would lose that word. So to try whatever vocabulary items you read, I mean, if he, and first of all, my dear friend, that see how that word has been used. Right? So, I mean, see the what either it is, it, it is used as a noun, I mean, first of all, which part of speech is it? Fine. Either it is, uh, it has been used as a verb or as a, as an, as a subject, of course, or as an object. I mean, yes, how, how? You see? And then, you can even, the dictionary can help you also. First of all, try to guess in, in the context, if you get to know the meaning. That is the best of all. If not, then, see, you can consult dictionary. And if it is a technical term, jargon, yeah, dictionary does help you, in fact. So, GTM considers what? Memorization. A useful learning strategy. DM completely disregards it. Memorization is a very important strategy for grammar translation method. Like, when sometimes the teacher asks you, yes, cram this thing, right? So cramming, for example, maybe some people have crammed, yeah, you know, uh, Hamlet, soliloquy, to be or not to be, that is the question. Some people have crammed the soliloquies, in fact. So yes, again, a literary passage, you enjoy it, and you cram it. Even, I have seen some teachers, what they do? They ask the students to cram what principles of management, right? To cram some, I mean, features of different theories, right? For example, maybe you all have, uh, in your early school life, you all have crammed, what, 14 points of Kaidi Azam. But, but now you may only know two of the points, right? What is that? Ainda Ain, Wafa Ki Ka Hoga. Maybe one point I remember now. So again, there are, what, 14 points of, of Kaidi Azam. So people cram, but I mean, hardly people knew about those 14 points. What was the message of those points? Had our teacher made us, in fact, know those, that thing, right, and we would not have crammed it. We would easily do it. But most of the cases, in the 60% cases, in fact, students, 
learned those those four fourteen points by heart. In fact, and you ask them what is wafaki tars, so they may not may may not be able to answer. Exceptions are there. In fact, in some institutions where the the teacher makes the concept clear, and the the teacher tell them that what is this wafaki and what is this all these things, so students understand. And then they can enjoy uh, Pakistan studies. But if you don't know the terminology, then it, it becomes difficult for you. Then what do you do? You simply cram. And you cannot cram much, in fact. So DM completely disregards. DM focuses on meaningful learning, in fact. The concept should be clear, of course. And you, you should be able to communicate this. There is, of course, a difference is there. So dear students, again, another difference. Move on. Why are you tired? You look down today. Pick up, yaar. Why is it so? Get up. Fine. Fresh. Should be fresh students. Okay? Good. So we are on the almost last slides. Happy now? No. It is penultimate slide. What is penultimate, by the way? Is it penultimate? Mean one before the last. Clear. What are we talking about, students? Differences between dialect method and Drama translation method. Good. Right. How many differences have we discussed so far? Five, six, seven. Nobody knows? Yeah, you can go back and see that. Fine. So we are talking about the differences. And the difference that we are discussing now, GTM depends on reading passages. Right? All together. Whereas DM makes our allowance, yes? Yes, DM allows you for realia pictures, charts, maps, and writing boards, of course. I hope you understand. We saw that in GTM we had a passage and we read and we did all on that passage. Whereas in direct method, yeah, we make use of, we, uh, what we do? We make use of both, we make use of pictures, charts, maps, and writing board. Fine? So... Realia also. What is realia, by the way? Right? Realia, aid that we use, something where you can use a tangible thing. Right? Opposite is intangible. So, tangible thing that we can use in our teaching. So, that we saw in, in direct method that realia is used. And my dear students, once the real, for example, if I talk about this, this uh, book, for example, and if I show you a book, so things would be easy for you. When I talk about computer, if I show you a computer, so that would be in fact word object reference. Clear? What is it? Word object reference. There's also mean words sense reference, you know, sense reference. You know, induction is what? A word is there and there is description. Whereas maybe in your early life you might have seen some books are there and there are objects with them. So one there is a word plus object, so you know that word easily. Right? You, you, mean, you, you see, you, you, I mean, quickly you come to know what is the exact concept. So children, in fact, particularly uh, in their books, you, you must have seen apple and there is a picture of apple. Cat and there is a cat sitting there. Fine. So dear students, realia, of course, in direct method is there, whereas in GTM, only a passage is there. Now there, of course, role of teacher in GTM is autocratic. Fine. The class is teacher-centered. Whereas in DM, democratic. Class is student-centered. Again, important. Now, of course, if you see that nowadays, uh, at present, generally we encourage and, 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 and research has proved that student-centered class are better. Where students interact more, Students needs are in fact analyzed and they are met accordingly fine if the students are given what they want Or if the students are what they incorporate example the teacher and the student They work together to, to produce a better model in fact So that is the need of the time fine so, right? students, I mean, students in this age, they are living in, the, of course, students of IT. They are in the age of internet, in fact. They have access to knowledge. Fine. So, if you prescribe things, like we saw in the grammar translation method, the teacher prescribes, the teacher gives rules. Whereas, here, mean, descriptive is there. Description is there, in fact. 
fine so this this tm the class is what teacher the dm the class is student center whereas gtm the class is teacher centered and again the role of teacher is in G in grammar translation method autocratic whereas here democratic you know democracy yes people of the government by the government fine people of the what government of the people by the people and for the people so that's we see of course in this ma uh, direct mathematical students that the teacher role of a teacher is democratic he encourages students right um, initially he i mean he makes students busy and then he withdraws himself so of course this is the point and then another difference is interaction in gtm is restricted to teacher student you, you see you remember that Yes, we saw that there's, there is an interaction between the teacher and student. Only the teacher asks question and the student replies. Fine, we saw that. Whereas here, GM allows student student interaction as well. It doesn't mean that DM does not allow student teacher interaction. Yeah, there is. Of course, in addition to that, my dear students, we saw that there is interaction among students. And that interaction, in fact, uh, what motivates students, uh, right? Gives confidence to the students that they are important part. And particularly people who are shy, students who are shy, they start interacting with their colleagues, with, with somebody who is sitting beside them. And later on, they can easily communicate to the teacher. Of course, I mean, th in different steps, that barrier can be in fact removed well some students they cannot I mean they find it hard to talk to teachers for so many reasons psychological reasons right that some students are shy they have a fear of the teachers maybe they think that uh, of course the teacher has more knowledge and I mean see there is there may be an information gap or the communication gap so once the one if a student is able to interact with his friend so a time comes when he start he starts interacting with his with his teacher as well so that's this, this DM in fact what allows students to interaction now how correction is done my dear students is by, by the teacher in GTM I told you earlier that well what happens all right that in GTM fine as we, as we saw my dear students that teacher corrects because he in fact he is the role is the model provider he is the one who provides vocabulary he is the one who provides the rules right so he corrects whereas in DM what happens self correction in fact which correction self correction of course when the student if the teacher feels that there is a problem with the student so I mean very very positively very very courteously student that teacher raises a question he asks a question and that question of course for example if the, if the student mispronounces or if there is a problem in a sentence what happens self-correction is ensured so my dear students in this way what happens that of course we can say that uh, correction is I mean corrections are done in GTM or in what we call it DM students so today in this lecture a short lecture comparatively we talked about differences between drama translation method and direct method. Dear students, it's very important. The, the topic, I in fact spared one a complete lecture on, on it because if you know that the differences between, I mean, direct method and drama translation method, you would be able to understand other concepts further in fact. And even we, 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 we may not be able to, I mean, give you differences between other methods, but this is a role model for you, for you guys, that once we'll do sample, we, we, we start the other methods, we'll start, for example, then, uh, then the next method, which method is next, by the way? Do you know that? Audiolingual method. Good. So I just gave you an inkling, a clue, that next method is audiolingual method. So then you will be able to, for example, you can compare on your own audiolingual method with with uh, direct method and uh, also you can compare audiolingual with grammar translation method. 
So my dear students, this, this is a model for you that how can we compare two you know, models. And we saw that, uh, I mean, what uh, the, the grammar translation method, right? And then we also uh, saw the, what is the direct method. And what are the differences? How uh, grammar is taught in the direct method inductively. How grammar is taught in the grammar translation method deductively, in fact. These are some common differences are there. If you want to have a look, quickly I want to show you that here is what that uh, use of mother tongue is encouraged by grammar translation method. DM, in fact, discourages it. And of course, we uh, grammar translation method focuses on what? Writing, fine, and DM focuses on communication. Evaluation in grammar translation method is in which way? Yes, of course, writing. Whereas evaluation in direct method is which base? I mean, oral base and also mean written base. So with this, we'll finish this lecture today. I hope you got the concept. I hope things are clear to you. I, I hope you come to know many differences. And again, it is not the end. I want you guys that find more differences between these two the methods. And again, I tell you that the direct method is very important method, of course. Whenever we move forward, we will see, right? This method, in fact, will act as what? As a important method to compare it with other methods. So thank you very much. See you in the next class. I thank you all.